system. Probably. So, welcome to the world of Persona Q. It is up to you to choose a protagonist of the story. You love the two protagonists. Your choice of the protagonist will affect how the story develops. Hmm, really? Yeah, for this live stream, I'm going to go with the Persona 4 protagonist. Despite having a game already started with the Persona 3 protagonist. So far, the only real difference is who you start with, slash, the perspective. And then it's like, yeah, the, the game will be... Focused on Persona 4. Etc. But also on side note, they only give you like six boxes per like dialogue thing, so you could basically just like yeah, it's not really that much of a space where you can type. So writing his actual character name is kind of impossible. You can do a random name, although I'm gonna keep him under his like actual name for this close to um yep but if you select risky you will not be able to change it later I'm gonna go hard because my main is on hard and I've only died once And that was actually to a boss. Yeah, so mostly the only thing different is how you perceive each of the characters. I really doubt it has anything mixing with the rest of it. Well, mostly. Welcome to the Velvet Room. This place exists between dream and reality, mind and matter. I already know all that. It seems you have quite a unique fate, after all. And I know that, too. The cards are whispering to me. They say that a curious incident is awaiting you. Is that why Igor is not here? Hey, Perhaps bunny. Perhaps you have a premonition of it already. Do you know who your threads of destiny will intertwine with? Uh, I'm not going to add the, re the art until the rest of it is done. Hmm. Marcus' words bring back memories of a certain person's words. Yeah. Wow. You're strong. Could this be the Fae that Margaret is talking about? No. If that's the case, the person's name is... Yeah, I can actually get away with putting the protagonist's name that I put for the original run in here. Oops. Yeah, that's fine. I see. As I thought, you sense something as well. I look forward to the story that the strands of fate will weave. Well then, until we meet again. All right. So... October 30th, 2011. The morning of the final day of the Yasugame High's Culture Festival. Hmm. This seems familiar. I I'm not going to go into, like, reminiscing about the actual game. At the Do Dojima home, where you is staying. There. All done. 
Nanako, Yu's younger cousin in the first grade. She does the housework after her mother died. It's actually... <laughs> I know, that panda is there in the actual game, too, so... The table is set, and breakfast Nanako prepared is already waiting for you. My teacher said you need to eat well in the morning. I just know how to cook eggs, so I made sunny side up eggs and a rolled omelet. Huh? The rolled omelet turned black. Uh huh. Let's scrape the burnt part off and eat it. Your choices don't really that matter that much. Burnt parts are bad for you. Yeah. But Dad says he likes it like that, so I always tell him he shouldn't eat it. Well, thanks for the food. The eggs are yummy. <laughs> Chickens are amazing. <laughs> huh? Someone's here. I wonder who's at the door. Yo. Hey, Kanji. Kanji, a first-year underclassman of you. You can be very brave, but also very impulsive. It's Kanji! <laughs> Good morning. Kanji came to visit this morning. Are you going to snack on my breakfast, too? Sorry to show up this early in the morning, man. The old hag wouldn't shut up about me taking this to you. Taking what? I thought it'd be a pain to lug all around school, so uh, I brought it now. Uh, you, you don't want it, huh? What is it? Uh, Kanji looks a little embarrassed as he produces a large bento box. Oh, we're having breakfast right now. Let's eat it. Apparently he brought his own breakfast. Huh? Uh, I don't know if you'd li like it, Nanako-chan. <laughs> I know, he looks kind of ridiculous in this one, doesn't he? Kanji spreads the food he brought out onto the table. What? Um... So he brought a lot of dishes. I'm not gonna bother reading all those out. Sorry, it's all brown and stuff. You think so? Cool. <laughs> uh, I'm glad to hear it. Actually, I, I took part of that. It's uh, that, that simmered one. You don't know the name of it? You can cook? You can make knit dolls, too. <laughs> you really can do anything. When I get bigger, I want to be like you, Mr. Um, Kanji. I don't want to even ask that question. I'll cheer you on. <laughs> <laughs> what are you cheering her on for? Seriously, what are you going to do if Nanako-chan does turn out like me? Um. Hmm? You hear something that sounds like the ringing of bells. Yeah, as I remember, the last day was reserved for the... Wait, I don't think that'll happen. Looks like the Nanako didn't even hear that sound. Whoa, look at the time. Uh, I guess we'll have to use my secret passage. Secret passage? There's a hole in the school fence. It's a shortcut to the classroom that lets you avoid the teachers. Nice. Kanji, you're a delinquent. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's so cool. Cool? Uh, not really. I mean, senpai, come on, stop glaring at me. Never. Anyway, a little past two in the afternoon.
I was I was gonna say the it's now the afternoon. The beauty pageant and the other events have ended, and the cultural festival is coming to a close. The class display. The group date cafe. There are no customers. Uh, we're gonna sit through this again. <sighs> yep. Today's the last day of the culture festival, but there's no one here at all. Yosuke, use a classmate and a good friend. His father manages the June store. If you want to be really correct, it's June's. If you really want to say it like that, I'll accept it. I hear all the other classes are in full swing. Chie, use classmate and a girl who loves both kung fu and meat. Oh, and I was kind of interested in this group date. I wonder why it's not catching on. Yukiko, another classmate, and the only child of the owner of the long-standing Amagi Inn. Man, I'm glad it isn't. There's nowhere else to rest. You guys should just have made a red spot or something. I like it. No one's taking pictures of me or making awkward small talk. Great plan, Yosuke-senpai. Rise, a first-year student with a nationwide celebrity as an idol. Although she's on currently leave this, this. Wow, I screwed that line up really badly. That was my plan, then I would have suggested a quiet zone to begin with. Yeah, I was just talking about that. There's one last event to finish off this festival later today, right? I wonder what it's gonna be about. I heard it'll be a karaoke booth with no sign-ups needed. Wouldn't it draw too large a crowd if you sang Risei-san? Wouldn't it? No, it's fine. Nato, a first year student, and use underclassman. Really a detective who hates the police. I want it! It'll be my second grand victory after the cross dressing pageant! I doubt it, Teddy. Teddy, a strange creature from the world inside the TV. He is currently living in Yosuke's closet. Does he have swords in there, though? When I grow up, I'm gonna be a singing, dancing magician! Want to see my magic trick, huh? How about it? Well, if you insist. Uh, Teddy, nobody said anything. A one, a two, and a three! Ta-da! My transformation into a gorgeous prince is complete. All you did was take off your costume. So, what did you think, Sensei? Were you shocked and amazed? I thought it was average. I'm used to seeing that already. Oh my! Have you lost that love and feeling? My heart burns stronger when I get the cold shoulder, senpai. Yeah, you should. Uh, you should actually watch the episode with the culture festival. Hmm. That sound again. Uh, is it me or does anybody else hear the bell? What was that just now? It sounded like bells. Hmm. It was different than our usual school bell, though, huh? Yeah. Oh! What is it? I heard that the Kinjiro Ninomiya statue runs around the schoolyard in the middle of the night. <laughs> uh... And... What does that have to do with anything? Yeah, what what does that have to do with this? Besides, we don't have one of those statues here. It's a common story as one of a school's seven horrors. Does this school have its own urban legends? Yes. Like I said, the statue runs around the... We don't have one! Oh, but the second one's impressive too. The eyes of the Mozart bust in the music room. Actually, that may be true. All they do is glow? Well, all the statue does is run. Again, we have no statue. The third one is, if you write your wish in the logbook at the nurse's office, it'll come true. Isn't that just a superstition? Maybe. Yukiko continues telling her stories. Okay, but here's the main point I wanted to get to. Okay. So you 
did have a point. Can you guess the sixth one? Does it have to do with a mysterious bell that everybody can hear except for other people? Whoever hears the bell of the clock tower to the end. Uh, we don't have a clock tower either. Then why do we keep hearing a bell? Although, as I recall, supposedly there was one here once. I heard it from the principal before. You know, I think you're right. But I'm pretty sure that was before we were in grade school. Hmm. So, what happens when you hear the bells to the end? You die. Dude, that's such a cliche. I don't think that uh, will actually work. You breathe your last? Rephrasing it doesn't make it better. Okay, enough about that story. That bell probably means the post-festival event starting. Let's go! Chie quickly leaves the classroom. Apparently Yukiko had scared her off. Huh? Chie left. Uh, can't believe anyone our age still gets creeped out by the seven horror stuff. Uh, are you scared? Hmm? No, not at all. I'm amused by this. In the hallways of Yasugame. Margaret, a resident of the Velvet Room, is standing here in the bustling hall. I know. Uh, uh I didn't know you were here. I've been allowed to have a fortune telling booth here. It's just a way to pass the time. Right. H hey Senpai, who's this beautiful lady? You never told me about her. Didn't these guys meet Margaret at one point? I can't remember. No, they didn't. Not for me neither. I can't let this pass. You explained that she's a resident of the Velvet Room, where your persona fusions are f performed. Oh, you mean that place you've mentioned before? Yeah, but everybody thinks I'm crazy when I mention it to them. doesn't stretch, and he was not referring to myself. Uh, I'd be curious to know what you told your friends about us. I have said nothing. Oh, sorry. Um, were you... There's no need for introductions. I know about all of you. That aside, did you hear that sound earlier? Yes. What sound? Oh, right. I thought the post-festival thing was starting. I see. So you did hear it. Yes. That sound did not come from reality. I heard it from my fortune telling booth after all. From your booth? Though it has no master, the fortune telling room is a simplified velvet room. The velvet room is inseparable from a guest's fate. Absolutely nothing meaningless happens there. So then, if a sound was heard there, it was by necessity. Interesting. Maybe you just dropped a bell or something? I don't doubt a bell could still ring like that. Indeed, something is happening. Or rather, something is about to begin. She ignored me. Well, I guess all we can do is check out this fortune telling booth. We should. This velvet room's where they've been helping you out all this time, right? You raise an interesting point. If you all heard the sound, then it must be related to all of you. Will you please follow me? It's this way. Margaret began leading the way. So, uh, hey, Yukiko, what's the seventh story? Uh, uh, I'm gonna bet she doesn't know. Well, if you've heard the six leading up to it, supposedly something will appear. What? That sounds like the hundred stories. Wah! What's wrong? Oh, uh, there was a spider crawling by my feet and... Huh? It's gone. Hmm. A spider? Must have been my imagination. Come on, let's go. The hallway in front of the fortune-telling booth. It's through here. Please be careful. As I feared, it is somewhat... unstable. Unstable? Unstable? Time. It's unstable. Okay. Um, let's go in, Senpai. Uh, 